Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you uh, to Nardis Williams and to Elizabeth Kenny for that great start, that really uplifting start to our season launch. It's a great joy to see so many of you here today, and welcome especially as well to everybody joining us online, wherever you are. Since the start of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic two years ago, we've all been living through a very strange time, challenging and testing, for many a time of isolation and of grief, yet also of astonishing creativity and shining generosity, not least from you, our magnificent audiences. You have been a lifeline for us and for the artists and for the repertoire that we all cherish. And in turn, this hall has been a beacon for many, thanks to that very vital support. In the past month or so, Eastern Europe has become a troubled place, and we're all carrying a level of anxiety about the world around us. In these times, more than ever, I hope that many have truly realized the powerful value of live performance. I was deeply moved a few days ago when news reached us about a classical music festival in Kharkiv, the second city of Ukraine, which despite the odds, went ahead on the actual day it was meant to open, the 26th of March. The city's Philharmonic Hall is now destroyed and in ruins. The musicians instead descended into a subway station for their audience to hear them in chamber music. Why do they risk going ahead? The director of the festival summed it up perfectly. Music unites us, he says. Amidst the darkness, there are eternal values and there is a future. Proof, in my opinion, if proof was ever needed of the value of music in all of our lives. And as we emerge from the pandemic, the arts should be central to our national recovery as we begin to rebuild our society and our economy despite the challenging times that now engulf us. Unfortunately for live performance, it's still far from life as usual. All institutions are reporting lower overall attendances this year. Wigmore Hall is doing okay, but is not immune to any of this, and we continue to face significant challenges. Rebuilding audiences to full capacity is an uphill battle. It's going to be an uphill battle, and your ongoing generosity enables us to plan for the long term and to inspire many seasons ahead. I firmly believe that we should do everything possible to preserve the fruits of our collective efforts here in recent decades. We have built together what is now the largest classical series in all four nations of the United Kingdom and at the forefront of the international chamber music world. We are 97% self-sufficient, only 3% of our funding comes from public funds, and the Friends of Wigmore Hall will celebrate its 30th anniversary next season with its highest membership levels ever. But let's not get carried away. An ambitious program comes at a cost, and we want to give as much work to as many musicians as we possibly can. We continue to reschedule concerts that were lost to the pandemic, as well as honoring plans that were already in place for, for next year uh, before the pandemic actually struck. We need to bring in four million pounds in ticket sales and three million pounds in fundraising to underpin a concert program of 450 events with two and a half thousand artists. Philanthropy and fundraising, especially through legacies and major gifts, helps us uh, to build our endowment and to plug any current gap in concert revenue due to the pandemic. The newly launched Wigmore Ensemble was set up specifically to help us on the road to recovery. 140 people have already joined this donation scheme, some making three-year commitments to help us rebuild and to recover. We are asking for £1,200 a year, that's £100 a month, and we're hoping to reach 200 members before next season, before that 30th anniversary of the Friends of Wigmore Hall. So please do consider supporting us at that level or upgrading your various levels of friendship. It's the best birthday present you can give to yourselves and to the Friends of Wigmore Hall. Other circles of support here today include the Rubenstein Circle, which now has 71 members. Our seasoned patrons, they give, they give us 10,000 pounds a year, and there are 17 of those. 
and our director circle who give us 20,000, there are 18 of those. And all that underpins the program so, so much. So all of these circles could do with new members and support. So if you are able to help at that level, speak to me or to marie Len or to anybody in the development team here or anybody wearing a badge here today uh, or contact us in the next few weeks. We're always very glad to hear from you. I have been inspired by the role that music played in the pandemic in our wider community and for those of all backgrounds. We attracted over 10 million views online since the beginning of the pandemic and millions more join us through regular radio broadcast and of course it's not all about concerts. Equally important is our wonderful learning department. Their award-winning music program continues with vital work in the community and here at the hall with people living with dementia, young people on the autism spectrum, families who've experienced domestic abuse, homelessness and poverty, as well as events for children under five and much, much more. We have welcomed many thousands of new young concert goers to live performances here since the beginning of this season, and it's, that's been a palpable source of joy for musicians, established audiences, and staff alike through the Cavatina Trust, which is now under Wigmore Hall's auspices, and our under 35 ticket scheme in conjunction with Classic FM. We had a party for some of those uh, people last night, and it felt, felt very odd for me to be the oldest person in the room. <laughs> So we should move on now to the season itself because I know you want to hear about that. We open with the first ever Wigmore Hall Bollinger International uh, Song Competition. Uh, Bollinger family is the new uh, supporter of the competition. We're very grateful for them. Uh, 35,000 pounds in prize money and a very exciting week for singers, pianists, and for, for you as audiences. In partnership with BBC Radio 3, our closest partner, the lunchtime concerts continue every Monday afternoon and they're broadcast, of course, on radio, as well now as streamed on our own website. And our indispensable Sunday morning series continues undiminished. The Finnish opera star, Karita Matala, makes a rare visit here next season. And we're delighted to welcome back Diana Damrau. And we celebrate Chinese New Year with bass baritone Shen Yang. And the music of the black English composer, Samuel, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, who received numerous performances here and appeared as a pianist here during the hall's first decade. It's featured right throughout the season, the soprano, Elizabeth Llewellyn, pianist Simon Lepper for the songs, whilst our, our uh, Wigmore Hall associate ensemble, the Kaleidoscope Chamber, Chamber Collective, bring us the chamber music. And if you were here on Monday, they rocked the place. And you can, you can listen again on Radio 3. They're absolutely magnificent. Another pianist and composer and writer we're celebrating is Ferruccio Bassoni, who took part in the very first concert here in May 1901. He's explored in recitals from Kirill Gerstein, and that's repertoire that you should certainly try to hear. The works of two important contemporary composers, Cassandra Miller and Gerald Barry, are heard uh, with the Bazzini Quartet. And of the 40 World, UK, and London premieres here next season, a particular highlight is a new string quartet by the composer Charlotte Bray, performed by the Castalian String Quartet. It's entitled Ungrievable Lives. It's a 13-movement quartet, and it will be presented uh, in conjunction uh, with an installation downstairs from the British artist Caroline Burroway. And that installation comprises of 13 children's dresses, handmade from refugees' life jackets gathered by the artist at the Life Jacket Graveyard in Lesbos in Greece. Amongst the leading pianists returning to Wigmore Hall are Angela Hewitt, Sarandra Schiff, Elizabeth Leonskaya in Brahms Chamber Music, a rare but very welcome appearance from Maria Zhao Pirish in a programme of Schubert and the Second Viennese School. Igor Levitt returns in the autumn in a programme of Brahms, Fred Hirsch, Liszt and Wagner, and we welcome Daniel Trifonov, Yuzha Wang and Leif Ova Adznes. Oli Mustanen performs the complete Prokofiev piano sonatas and Paul Lewis commences a series devoted to Schubert. Uh, the young Japanese pianist Mao Fujita performs the complete Mozart piano sonatas and Mitsuko Chida, who has been central to the last year, the last 20 years of the Berletti Butoni Trust, collaborates with some of its distinguished alumni in a special celebration. And I can't wait to hear the Jerusalem Quartet here tomorrow night, but also 
uh, right through next season, and especially in an evening of Yiddish cabaret. Watch out for the Hagen Quartet in Mozart, the Castellian Quartet in Britain's three-numbered string quartets. There are over 95 string quartet concerts across the season. I can't mention everybody, so any of the quartets that I've omitted, please don't, uh, uh, please don't give out to me or have a Will Smith moment afterwards. Uh, we, uh, we also welcome the Gould Piano Trio, and uh, they are playing Beethoven's Piano Trios. Two major milestones of the season are cementing uh, our relationship with the African Concert Series, and they will make us their main London base by 2024, and an exciting new partnership with the London Contemporary Music Festival. The British countertenors Yeston Davies and Hugh Cotting represent two different generations of singers, with Hugh as the relative newcomer, the winner of last year's Kathleen Ferrier Award. And having already established collaborations with Oxford Leader, we join, and of course Leeds Leader, we join with the Ludlow English Song Weekend for an English Song Day. It's so important for the whole to support uh, musical endeavours outside of London. And uh, a weekend of Indian classical music is led by Amjad Ali Khan and his sons. The Nash Ensemble devotes a series to Beethoven and the Romantics. We look forward to the winners of the Leeds International uh, Piano Competition, to clarinetist Martin Frost in residence, to visits from Midori, Christian Tetzlaff and Leonidas Kavakos, and the 20th anniversary of the Pavel Haas Quartet in Czech repertoire, uh, Vorjak and Martinu, as well as in Haydn, Prokofiev, and Schubert and the harpsichord Mahanes Fahani will conclude his solo Bach series. The Irish Baroque Orchestra bring us the Dublin 1742 version of Handel's Messiah, and we celebrate the 500th anniversary of William Byrd here with the Cardinal's music. We also bring the extraordinary group Solomon's Knot off-site around the corner to the beautiful church at St. James's Spanish Place for Bach's St. Matthew Passion, and Hervé Nicke brings us Foray's Requiem in an arrangement that will fit here. Uh, today, we properly launch the Wigmore soloists who have been here uh, for empty hall and socially distant concerts right throughout the pandemic. Uh, we never got round to the formal launch until this afternoon, and this ensemble and its, its directors, Michael Collins and Isabel von Kehlen, will be central to our programme over the decades ahead. I could go on and on but you will get a press release on your way out and a season listing, and they'll also appear on the website very soon. The brochure will be posted at the end of April, so do watch out for that. And uh, again, apologies to anything, to anybody I wasn't able to mention, um, but I think I've been able to give you a sense of how I've, I've structured the season. I'm filled with gratitude when I think about everything you do for Wigmore Hall in these times of particular difficulty. Your generosity gives us hope, which is a very precious thing for musicians and for audiences worldwide. And I look forward to welcoming you to the hall, either online or in person during the season ahead. And now we can sit back and enjoy the Schubert Octet. Thank you very much indeed.